Salutations! Uh, welcome to another video. I honestly didn't think I'd be doing two follow-up videos to this, but that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so I made that video, uh, Christian Response to a Popular Stargate Clip of Atheism. I honestly thought that maybe two people would watch it, uh, one of them being the friend that I sent it to, um, to kind of answer some of, of her concerns. I didn't think that I would receive a um, lot the views that I did, much less um, a ton of the responses that I did. So I thought I would take some time out to respond to the new responses. Now, yesterday I made a video for uh, one of the uh, people on here, a fed guy. He did a really thoughtful, long, drawn out, uh, uh, thoughtful response to my video, point by point. And I responded back to those responses point by point. And, uh, and then we had a very cordial discussion on Discord. So uh, that was very pleasant and uh, very, uh, very good. But um, since then, a little bit before and a lot after, I see a whole bunch more comments that are just continue to pour in again. Uh, I will uh, be around to do this uh, all the time. I've got our things to do, but I did have an hour open this morning. So I said, you know what, let's just go through right now, go through all the comments that are there right now. Uh, well, I, I don't have time to type responses to everybody. It's easier for me just to get in front of a camera and talk things out. So that's what I'm going to do here. So uh, we're just going to go down. We're going to go down and I'll zoom out just a little bit here and make that a little bit bigger and easier for people to see. Uh, so you see I'm not really misrepresenting anyone's uh, comment uh, out. Now the first ones I did to start text replying to, and this was yesterday, 21 hours ago. Uh, but since then, I've gotten uh, close to a dozen more comments, and some of them are responses here that we're going to go through. Uh, so uh, Jimma says, Stargate went out of its way to avoid calling the Christian god evil. They literally stated in the Demon episode that the gold could not fake being a Christian god, but Sokar could pretend to be a devil ex and exploit Christianity. At no point did the character suggest that Christianity monotheism was a problem, and, that, and they categorically state that the Ori fire was meant to be seen as evil, and that's something that predates human existence. It is suggested that the association with fire and evil was incalculated in the Avalon galaxy. It goes on into some 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 detail about Ibis and stuff like that, and the way the Ori spread the religion. Um, I I said as much in my video. I could swear I said I, I completely understand it's fictional, and I also completely understand that they try to distance themselves. I can sit here and say um, that I'm that I'm telling a story, and it's going to feature this 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 thing that is not Christianity and then go on and attribute several characteristics common with Christianity to that let's say fake religion hey in my story there's this fake religion but guys it's not Christianity you know how those tv shows that say that none of the characters here are meant to represent anybody who's alive or dead or whatever have you uh it's any 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 connection is purely coincidental uh, well they do that because oftentimes in depicting people they whether it is truly intentional or an accident, we just have to take their word for it, they end up um, really uh, doing just that. They end up you know, portraying somebody out there. Uh, you, can, you can make an argument uh, against Christianity while basically setting up something that has a lot of elements of Christianity and saying, look, this really isn't Christianity. We don't want you Christians to get upset, but we are going to make some points here. And that's that's fine. I get it. I, I have. I. I. Uh, I. I totally understand. I'm not upset by that. Uh, I'm not offended by that. Uh, I think storytelling is awesome. I like Stargate. I like Star Trek, even though I don't agree with a lot of the arguments that they're making. I think they're highly entertaining shows. I own the DVDs for crying out loud. I wouldn't buy the DVDs if I didn't like the shows. So I think some of you are reacting out of thinking I, I love the shows. Don't get me wrong. But I don't have to agree with the arguments of a show in order to uh, to to like it. But yes, I, I get all of that. I get all that. But you can sit there and disclaim it all you want. But if they're representing the points of my religion and then this, the main character is arguing against those points, we can still develop a conversation around that. And that's fine, too. 
That said, Stargate 1 did lead to the end of my Christianity, although not my theism at the time, because the nature of the Old Testament God was so evil that Gould would be offended by being associated with him. Um, I, I, that's exactly why I brought up this clip. Uh, it was a it was a uh, friend of a friend that essentially told me that the Stargate expressed her beliefs in atheism really, really well. So I think it's a little disingenuous to say that this would no way, shape, or form represents Christianity. Um, and, that, and it has nothing to do with this discussion when, in fact, it wasn't me who went out and found this clip and said, now I'm going to go and discuss it. It was somebody who brought it to my attention in the context of talking about atheism versus theism. And then I went and watched the clip and I said, I just got inspired. I said, let me go and make a response video on it. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 where we're at. Claiming that your God has transcendent standards because he created has right to do whatever it is is just a poorly disguised might makes right morality. Um, you know, and of course, that's one of the arguments they make in the show. I believe um, if you make something that doesn't give you the right to do with it, as you will, um, the, the Bible categorically, number one, disputes that argument. If you create anything as an artist or whatever, have you have the right to do with your artwork, whatever you please. And no man can criticize you. The Bible says that categorically. And I think for the most part, you know, we we, we tend to uh, agree with that or whatever. And it's a hard... It's a hard position for us to take because we'll, the argument back, of course, will be, we're not just pieces of inanimate pieces of artwork or, or whatever have you. Um, <clears throat> but God is much more above us. You know, uh, he is he is God. Uh, now, I think the other reason that you kind of glaze over, there's two reasons that work hand in hand. Yes, he created us, and that's a good enough reason right there, maybe to follow him and everything else. But there's also the fact that in the Bible, it is clear that he is holy, he is good, he is righteousness. And you're going to see comments like this over and over as we go down. Oh, he's he's so evil. In fact, right here, I could not lower my standards to evil where Christian God could not it could be considered evil incarnate. Um, again, over and over again. Uh, oh, the guy will, this is the comment I was looking for, the guy will be offended by being associated with him. Uh, again, uh, the Bible says that he is good, he is holy, he is pure. He's also, you know, holy means he is he is executing justice. You know, he has to be fair and he has to be strict and he has to, you know, uh, be the one who enacts the justice. Justice, uh, vengeance is my say the Lord. When somebody kills one of your relatives, okay, you don't have the right to go and take vengeance against them by law. Same thing in heaven's law. If If, if someone goes and kills one of your relatives, uh, you are to rest in the Lord knowing that he will enact justice for you. And when one of our relatives have been hurt, and one of our loved ones have been hurt, we want to see that justice carried out. We long for that justice. I've seen my friends, I've seen a friend where his daughter was, had something very horrible happen to her, and he was so filled with holy rage. He wanted to make sure that person was punished for it, but he wasn't allowed to lay a hand. He has to rest in the knowledge that the government and God will take care of it. And uh, government's corrupt if they don't have a good justice system that's completely fair. If they let people off the hook because, hey, you were friends with the judge or friends with the government or whatever the deal is, that's considered a corrupt government. We want to see justice carried out. We want to see it carried out f fairly. And that's exactly what, 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 what God does, okay? Now, the problem is a lot of you are judging the God of the Old Testament. And it's the same God in the New Testament, by the way. Jesus didn't pull any punches. People were killed in the New Testament for lying about, you know, stuff even. Just for lying, people dropped dead. Um, you're, you're, you're judging God, but on what ethics and morality are you judging God by? It's your own ethics and morality, your subjective morality. It's your preference of what you don't want to see done. And your preferences are going to be different than your neighbors, who are going to be different than the guy across the street, who's going to be different different morality than, obviously, people from other countries and cannibalism, right? And like, cannibals have their own morality, and they're all kind of preferences. And, and you don't have any real authority to, uh, you know, outside of any established government, which in and of itself is a bunch of preferences. You don't have any real objective morality outside yourself to tell the cannibal that he's wrong for his preferences in life. 
Side note, Stargate Universe deal, uh, deals with the understanding of the final ultimate questions of the universe and powers higher than that of sentient be beings, but they cancel the show as they did the interesting uh, reveal. And it's a shame a lot of these shows get canceled before they can do a good ending or an ending at all sometimes. Uh, and I just enjoyed the journey. And Stargate, uh, especially the early seasons, is a really, really great journey. I really, really enjoyed it. Stargate is one of my favorite ones. Uh, all the Star Trek shows just about uh, from Star Trek Enterprise and before. All those old Star Trek shows, I love them all, including the original. Uh, read a lot of the books. I just, I just really enjoy the whole universe uh, and whatnot. Uh, the Incredible Hulk with Bill Bixby. That's a good one. That's sci-fi uh, in a way, but it's it's really, really good for such low special effects, great acting uh, and the such. I need to watch Firefly. I just got that on DVD, so I need to watch that uh, soon. I've heard really good things about that. Babylon 5 is another good one. Side note two, when the Ori did create the humans of the galaxy, their ancients recreated into intelligent life in the Milky Way galaxy after a galaxy-wide plague several billion years ago. Okay, interesting. I did some comments here. I'll, I'll ignore my comments. Uh, I mean, the fact you seem so upset with religion, with the, this portrayal of religion that acts like Christianity suggests maybe you're realizing something. I'm not upset. I'm just exploring it. There's a difference. Uh, I don't think you guys have ever really truly seen me when I'm upset. Um, I, I, I find it as an interesting conversation to, to talk about. But at no point did I give any reason for you to infer that, that I'm upset at all. I'm really not. Um, it's fairly easy to develop very sophisticated ethical codes without a deity. Uh, I never argued otherwise. What I did argue is that um, you can develop a code without a deity. It can. Everyone has some sort of code that they 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 will tell you that they follow. Um, I argued a couple of things. Number one, no no one follows their own code perfectly, and even by their own standards, they're guilty. Uh, if they tell you they follow their own code perfectly, uh, they're usually full of pride and, and hubris. And I think most of us would agree that's a concern. But number two, um, uh, you can come up with a very simple code of ethics. You can come up with a very complex G governments. Governments are, generally speaking, uh, plenty of governments in the world are atheistic and have extremely deep and complex ethical codes that they have on their law books uh, and whatnot. I never said otherwise. Here, you guys are making some straw man arguments here. I never said that you couldn't have a code. What I said is uh, it's not an objective code referring to a source uh, outside of yourself or whatever have you. It's your personal preferences. Or if it's, let's say, a truly democratic government where every law is being voted on, it'd be the preference of the masses, which have often been wrong. Uh, the masses in Germany, when Hitler was in control, we look back at them now and say, huh, maybe they were wrong. But again, for most of us, without a Christian God to point to and a Bible to point to, that's our opinion. Hitler was wrong. The people in Germany at the time, a lot of them who supported him, had a different opinion than us. The idea that you don't have subjective morality is laughable because you suspend moral judgment if your deity um, does it. That's a self-defeating argument. If I'm judging the deity, then I'm using subjective ethics to evaluate an objective. Objective just simply, in this case, means something that's completely outside of myself, right? So uh, in Dungeon Dragons or Pathfinder, a, uh, most characters just kind of follow their own moral compass or whatever have you. But if you play a cleric or a champion, you usually pick a fake deity. And that deity has a list of codes and ethics and anathemas. So their list is outside of their character. It's right here and it's ran down by their deity. It wasn't made up by themselves. It didn't come from their own heart. It came from the book. They just chose it and say, that's the way I'm going to live my life. They chose something outside themselves. That's objective. Now, the objective doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Okay, that's a lot of my other questions dealt with that particular subject or whatever have you. So... Uh, uh, subjective means that you are, of course, coming up with it on your own. Okay, you're you're pulling it out of your nostril hairs, whatever you know, using whatever approach you decide to use. But you, but you, since you are coming up with it from your own heart, that makes it subjective, and uh, and and whatnot, and, and that in and of itself doesn't prove rightness or wrongness. But of course, if you're pulling out of your heart and your neighbor's pulling out of your heart and his heart and go on and so forth, 
If you're living in a house where there is no objective rules, no objective ethics, in other words, there is no law, and people move in next door to you, and one of them's a Christian and the other one's a cannibal, I bet you have a preference of which one's going to be living um, next to you. Of course, some of you might say the cannibal, but I'm just saying you're going to have a preference because they have two totally different code of ethics. I would define evil as in what evil means as a conceptual symbolic definition is the failure to reduce unnecessary suffering where you possess the capability to, to do so. Um, well, I I exactly um, what is suffering and pain and, and, and all that jazz uh, and, and what is unnecessary, right? Uh, I mean, a good example of this is just a modern day abortion. Uh, the baby can feel pain pretty early on. I'm not the expert in the abortion debate or whatever have you, but I was just listening to a debate on this the other day. And the pro-life arguer was pointing out, I don't remember how many weeks it is, but the baby can feel pain pretty early. And then when we perform the abortion, that baby feels, that fetus feels that pain. That is, would that not be unnecessary suffering? And yet many support abortion, you know, you know, in that process and whatever have you. I mean, but of course, many people who support abortion would say that's not unnecessary because it's necessary for the health of the mother. Where, where do you draw these lines at? You know, and, and whatever have you. That's just one example. I could be here all day. Uh, fed guy, you, we seem equally passionately subjects. I like you. I like you too, Fed guy. Uh, I think we had a really great uh, conversation yesterday. Um, I also found that hilarious since the Old Testament God would easily fit is that gold. The, the difference between God and some, a race like the Gould or the Nazis, I guess, you could compare, you know, if you're going to compare them with the Gould, you might as well go all the way, is that, is that, again, you know, God has the right to judge people. And the thing is, you guys are looking at it like, if a person kills another person, that's bad, that's horrible. Now, there are truly exceptions to that. Uh, if someone breaks into your house and comes at you with a knife, you have the right to shoot him. It's called self-defense. There are righteous reasons for you to take another life, right? There just are. And you wouldn't say that person's evil for defending himself. There are righteous reasons for God to take life. And it turns out his options are much different than ours because not only did he create us, but more importantly, he's the one who has the right to truly just us, um, judge us. Uh, the Bible says, judge not lest ye be judged. And it's specifically talking about those, uh, you know, those types of judgments on people's souls, right? It doesn't mean don't judge. If someone murders a child, we're going to judge that act and call it heinous, and that's fine. And then we're going to take them to court, and we're going to try them through our government court. Along the Bible supports all of that. When it's talking about those people who go around and say, you are definitely not Christian, you are going to hell, or whatever have you, without knowing somebody. Only God can really truly look into somebody's heart. Only God can truly see what makes you tick and what you were thinking when you did something. Okay, and therefore only God can judge you, truly judge you. That's one of the reasons you guys are you guys got to listen to everything I'm saying here. God can judge you. Number one, yes, because He created you, but that's only one of the reasons. Number two, because He's the only one who can truly read you. He's the only one who can truly see your heart. Jesus talks about this again, again, again. God looks at your heart to determine your sin. Okay, so He knows whether you kill that guy out of self-defense or not. Because you can't lie to God. It just can't be done. So number two, unlike human beings, God can read people's hearts and makes them a much more qualified judge just because of that. Number three, if God takes the life of somebody who seems innocent, a child, a baby, whatever have you, God is in the unique position of making sure they're ushered into something infinitely better than they would have had here on earth. Okay? So if if I come if I come and uh, let's say uh, I take your purse, you're upset. I've stolen your purse, and I say, hold on a second, and I give it back to you, and everything in your purse is there, but stuff full of a million dollars. I don't think you're going to be upset that I stole your purse. All right, God's the one person who can take our life, and then if we truly aren't guilty, He will make sure, according to the Bible. That, that he is taking us to the right proper place in heaven. So you guys are judging God based on human standards, based on you're trying to use the same code of ethics you would use to judge people to a being who has perceptions and perspectives and powers that are way beyond any human's capabilities. 
and an approach that's completely more holy than ours and an approach that we can't understand because he's that much holier than we are. So your arguments about him being evil and all this completely fall apart. They, they, they just do. Um, also, notes on acts of love. It's a three-day nap, not an actual death or an actual sacrifice. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Um, there's some responses back and forth uh, on that, so I'll, I'll let them. Uh, amen. Thank you, JC Servant. I, I try. I try. Um, FYI, different states or countries now punish you for, for not following the rules. Infinite punishment for finite crates is a crappy way to do things. You know, I mentioned this to um, to Fed Guy yesterday. There is some Christians who believe that you are paying infinitely for your crimes. Others who believe that when God throws you into a lake of fire, it consumes your spirit just like any fire consumes things, and therefore you're destroyed and you don't suffer forever. I don't know. I'm okay. I will be okay either way because number one, I'm not going to put myself in God's shoes and say, if God determines that infinite punishment is what's called for, I personally don't feel confident enough in my fallacies to compare my ethics with God ethics, who's way above us, and say, you're doing this wrong, God. That's a little thing that, that Satan did. It's called putting himself above God and his judgments above God and saying, sir, I don't believe in you anymore. Here's a middle finger. I don't agree. I'm going to do my own thing. You guys might think that's cool. Uh, I, and, and definitely there's times where I've stood up to my own leaders here on earth because they are imperfect. They are sometimes very evil and you have to stand up to evil and whatever have you. But, but God is not evil. God is holy. He is loving, but he also has to enact justice. Now, how could infinite punishment ever be justified? Again, I don't know for a fact it's infinite punishment, but how could it possibly be justified? So I can tell you, if you go up and you punch me, you're going to jail for a day. You go up and you punch the president of the United States, you're going to jail for a very long time. The, the, the level of the punishment is in proportion with the, you know, where the person is at on the hierarchy of things. Whether you like it or not, whether you think it's fair or not, that's just the reality of thing. God is way, 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 way above all of us. So when you stick your fist in the air and you say, I'm going to do it my way, and you give the, the Lord of the universe a big middle finger, and then you commit crimes against him, you commit crimes against your fellow man, that all adds up to a very big punishment. So there you go. That's what I would say to that. Um, and, and I deserve that for myself because I've done those things in my life. And your good deeds don't offset your bad deeds. You can't tell a police officer, hey, uh, I'm never going to do bad deeds again, so let me off the hook. You can't say that to a judge. Uh, and anyways, none of the things that we do are really good, like in that regard to God's eyes, because everything we do, uh, you know, most of everything we do without God is for selfish motivations anyways, and that's offensive to God. I would say also stay Stargate also puts forth the idea that humanity can evolve to the point where we've solved our societal problems. This is a great point here, persona non grata. Um, uh, that would take for humans to finish becoming the fifth race, just as the older four races have managed to do, although they remind us of the very real danger of accidentally setting our stage for eventual extinction via technological mistakes, like how the Asgard doomed their own race. This is a very, very, very good point. And this is why I said earlier, and you've, you've kind of proven one of the points I made on that video, the science fiction shows of the 80s and 90s, and even going back to the original Star Trek of the 60s, we're arguing for humanism and humanism and let's just take a look at that real quick so humanism is an outlook or system of thought attaching prime importance to humans rather than divine or supernatural matters humanist beliefs stress the potential value and goodness of human beings emphasizing common human needs and seek solely rational ways of solving human problems and so the argument that science fiction shows make is that humanism will solve all of our problems. Now, personally, I think that takes a lot more faith than believing in God because history has shown us over and over and over and over and over and over again, no matter how many governments we try to make and everything like that, we don't do a really great job of improving our condition. And most of these governments start out kind of up here and then they just decline and it falls apart. So, um, and we kind of see that American government has little, very little to be helpful about at any point in time. So, yeah, 
let's see here. I want to say Windsor Plaza tries to prove the place at home. The point is to better understand uh, in the view of the lion scarecrow and ten men of their shared at their graduation ceremony. The point was sometimes we seek what is what we already have, uh, i.e. brain courage, a heart, a place where we belong. Uh, sometimes that we seek most is something we already have. So this is a good point. Okay, you can see a different argument in the movie than I do, uh, and that's okay. Uh, that's kind of the cool thing about artwork. We can interpret it uh, different ways. I have no problem with this comment. I'm glad that you're looking at these things like uh, an argument and, and whatever have you. Um, now, the writers intend to convey, uh, you know, an idea that is true for for all people and all things. Only to encourage us to carefully mind, mind uh, carefully take carefully minded personal inventory. Uh, I'm not trying to say I know for a fact what the authors intended. I'm just saying what they did. And clearly what they've done here, and we see this just by the responses, uh, we see this by the fact that I was recommended to me by an atheist, is look at this video and see it as a, a, as a Christianity versus atheism discussion. Whether or not they truly, truly intended it, I think they did. And again, that's okay. It's not a bad thing. We should have these conversations. I had this conversation with that guy yesterday. I think these are good conversations to have. And I think expressing the argument through an art form is a wonderful, wonderful thing. I think a lot of, I think what's happened with modern shows is they become too preachy. They forgot the art of making an argument through storytelling with good writing the way Stargate used to. Um, I think you watch shows nowadays and they just hit you over the head with, oh, Christianity is bad or men are bad or whatever the deal is. They just kind of hit you over the head with it. Christianity does the same thing. They make really corny movies that hit you over the head with, well, God is the best thing ever. And atheists are angry, evil people. And they don't tell a good story. They don't flesh out the characters representing each viewpoint. They make 2D car, car, uh, carve outs. And it's it's not good. It's not good. And it's it's been very not good entertainment. Uh, I would much rather watch these shows from the 90s that argued against my viewpoints on life than watch some of the christian -y movies I've seen that are really, really bad and with really bad writing. And I'd most certainly rather watch any of those than the newer shows today that are trying to hit me over the head with liberal values that forgot how to tell a good story along the way. Orville's another uh, show that tells pretty good stories, uh, not surprisingly since um, he was... Uh, Seth MacFarlane was creating that uh, directly inspired by Star Trek. Started off as a big joke, and then it got more and more serious. It went along, and I really enjoy that universe. Though, again, a lot of the shows definitely go against Christian values, and there's characters in that show who definitely represent uh, values uh, separate from Star Trek. There was a single episode of the original Star Trek that made a spontaneous endorsement of Christianity, but I don't think fans responded well to it because they never did it again. Quite, quite possible. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember that one, but I don't have all the shows memorized, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. Sorry, but your premise is flawed. SG-1 is not anti-religion at all. Um, I, I don't think, again, I don't think I use the words anti-religion. You can make an argument and you can, you can, you know, and when you make the argument in entertainment like they did here, you'll generally try to represent both sides uh, and whatever have you. Uh, and in fact, they did represent some of that Christianity argument and why this alien race, which uh, is a very loose stand-in for maybe Christianity or some other religions, why people should follow them uh, and whatever have you um, and whatnot. Uh, I didn't say it was a perfect argument. I didn't say it was anti-religious. I just said it brings up some really good points that a lot of people, uh, oh, this is a fed guy, by the way, uh, a lot of people um, find to be convincing enough to consider it something they point to as to why they walked away from Christianity or why they walked away. We've already seen two people now who say that just here in these comments uh, and, and talk to me on the side. Um, this is Fed Guy, so we'll go over more because we talked a lot. Uh, AP Persona Not Grata. There was never an era in all of human history where humans enjoyed a common and peaceful society due to a common morale code, neither across an society nor across the world. What you think we lost, we never really had. I don't think I ever made the statement that we had it and then we lost it. I, I, I think that's a that's something I never represented. Things weren't great. In fact, they were horrible in places where Christianity, where Christian churches dominated entire societies. Um, I'm not going to get into that because we would have to go through a lot of history. We'd have to go through which churches were truly Christian or not. There's a lot of people who call, in fact, Jesus warned us over and over again, there would be many false shepherds that came in his name. And he would say, I'll spit them out of my mouth and say, I never knew you. 
there are plenty of fakers throughout all of history uh, and whatever have you. And I know you're going to say, well, that's a that's an awfully convenient excuse to get away from prior history of Christians or whatever have you. It's why I generally don't even like using a Christian. Look, I'll make this very clear. I don't even go to a church. I disagree with a lot of churches that are out there and a lot of what they're doing. I think they misrepresent Christianity, um, the Bible. That's why I just say, I like to usually just say I'm a Bible follower rather than saying, hey, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Because I know there's a lot of luggage and baggage that comes uh, with that that's attributed to it. And by the way, we see this for just about any ism. We see, uh, for example, there are a lot of, you know, atheists who are very angry and act very rude and attack, you know, religious people and do some pretty heinous things. Some of the countries that were atheist, that are atheist, uh, you know, some of the governments do some absolutely horrendous thing. You don't see me coming on here into these discussions and saying atheism is wrong because country XYZ and then, you know, that that was clearly atheistic, did these horrible things. I don't know um, if they full or if they're atheists the same way you're atheist. I don't I don't connect all of those things together. I don't ascribe their behavior to your behavior or way of thinking. So I, I would appreciate the same charity, not Everybody who calls themselves a Christian is following the code of conduct listed in the Bible. And that's why I spend a lot of time uh, when I'm talking with other religious people uh, like Mormons and such like that. I don't spend a lot of time attacking what their leaders did in the past, or what their people did in the past or anything like that. I focus on the theologies that they teach in their you know, holy text and, and whatever have you. With, with, with atheism, I focus on the logical consequences uh, that can come out of it and, and conclusions. Nor has Chris, you ever really produce what you think the world has refused. Um, nor has Chris, so Christianity, Jesus provides, when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, you are born again. You're given a new heart. That's what the Bible promises. It doesn't promise utopia on earth. It doesn't promise a perfect government. It doesn't promise uh, even a perfect organization that you can go to or anything along those lines. What it says is that when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you will be given a new heart here on earth and you'll be given a place in heaven to worship God. That's it. Anything more than that, you guys are just kind of wishing. And a lot of Christians wish for the perfect government and everything like that. And that's why they're so fired about certain political candidates um, and, and whatever have you. So, and and I, I, I have seen God provide new hearts for people. He's given me a new heart. So I think that promise has been fulfilled. Religions divide far more than they unite. Um, so does atheism. So do people in general. We just tend to fight and get angry at each other, whether we're using religion as the man just likes to fight and get angry and divide. They just do. We have a history of violence and anger and things like that. We see it in this country, in the United States, every single day. And, 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 and if religion is a convenient excuse for us to do so, we'll do it. If atheism is a convenient excuse for us to do so, we'll do it. People are evil and wicked, and they will use the excuses. But if you're talking about the follow, the true followers of Jesus Christ, and not just everybody who calls themselves a Christian, all you have to do is look at the New Testament, which is eyewitness testimony of how the disciples carry themselves and the apostles after the disciples, and you'll see how violent they were, which is to say they weren't violent. Many of them laid down their lives for their beliefs peacefully and died as martyrs. Their blood that was poured out on the ground became the seeds of Christianity spreading so quickly in the early centuries because they were peaceful. They didn't take over countries through violent pursuit and force them to convert like certain other religions do. So again, I would just kind of point that out. Division brings unrest, injustice, and suffering. Okay, sure. And fighting and infighting and bickering will certainly do that, I suppose. The Bible, that's why the Bible, as far as like churches and organization goes, the Bible talks about unnecessary uh, division and this kind of tomfoolery. But the roadmap can be perfect, but people are not perfect, and they do what they're going to do. Uh, and that's going to create a lot of problems. That's why it's called sin. When you don't follow what God tells you, it causes other people pain and suffering. 
The part of religions I think is the worst. It's the need to push ideals on others whether they want it or not. So I always find this to be an interesting argument. Let's say, um, let's say uh, you are a doctor and one thing that we know is there's a lot of people suffering from cancer and uh, we have created this new drug that uh, that's just come out that if you take it proactively before you get cancer, you just take this pill every day for two weeks and it makes you immune to cancer for the rest of your life. You would hope that that doctor would go through every length to advertise this new miraculous cure. And you, I would hope you would think he's not just being pushy. He's trying to save lives out of love and concern for his fellow man. Now, of course, some people are going to believe, well, wait a minute. This is the only pill that can prevent cancer? Isn't there another way? What if I just eat vegetables? And the doctor's like, well, that can be helpful, but it does it 100%. Vegetarians get cancer all the time. They just get it less often. That's a good step, but it's it's not enough. We want you to avoid, we, we can stop one of the biggest killers of all time if you'll just get on board and take this pill. Uh, but, 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 and they get pushy. The doctor, well, I shouldn't say they get pushed. The doctor will probably insist on getting these messages out there. We saw this with COVID. We had created this vaccine that addressed the disease, but a lot of people were resistant. What happened? The government got pushy in order to try to save lives, right? At least that's what they told us. I'm not going to get to the whole COVID argument in detail, but at the surface level, that was the argument. And a lot of liberals supported the government in those initiatives of pushing it hard on people and explained to them over and over again why they need to take the vaccine to protect those around them. Was that pushy? I, of course, I suppose it was pushy. But in the eyes of those people who truly believe in the vaccine, logically, it was necessary in order to reduce, as you put it, to reduce suffering and pain and all this. Well, Christianity has the biggest cure of all for the biggest problem of all. We are all going to die. We are all going to face judgment. It's not like cancer that only affects X number percent of us. It's going to affect everybody. So, of course, Christians are going to preach that message. And that's aside from the fact that God commands us to do it. So your idea that we are the ones that would send ourselves to hell is just silly. No, it's not silly. I have had atheist relatives who argue just like you guys here said, I can never believe in a God. Da, 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 da. And I would clarify any points there was any confusion on. And they're after I clarify those points, they're like, I would never believe in God. I would rather go to hell than that. These are not my words. These are the words of, of these, these, these people. Um, at the very least, these people will say, uh, I've heard them say, I would never want to be with that God at all. I would never want to be with that God. Well, that's a place called hell, because when you are outside of God, you are outside of his blessings that sustain you. Um, you said to yourself, believe in what my God tells you, go to hell. Yeah, pretty, pretty. it's not just believe in God, put your faith in him. It's even worse than belief, right? I'm telling you, put your faith in him. Repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ. That is the only way to be saved. You're absolutely right. Jesus, Jesus didn't make any gray area. This is not a choice. This is bullying. It, it, you know, that's what the Republicans said when the government was trying to push COVID on everybody because the Republicans did not, for, I won't say all the Republicans, numerous, loud majority if or minority of Republicans did, 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 did thought that the government was just bullying them into taking something they didn't want to take. So when you don't want to take it, it's bullying. When you think the vaccine protects everybody, and it protects you by other people. Not all of a sudden, you're like, "Oh, this is the best thing." Wait, this isn't bullying. This is doing what's necessary to reduce suffering. You know, the analogy of the doctor with the pill. Basically, uh, let's see. Jermaine says, uh, "Jermaine, Toby." Basically, the people that God orders to be eliminated aren't innocent. But God created humans knowing exactly they that they would eventually do what He regretted, making humans because they did an omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient being knew that they would do eons before he created them and put a tree in the garden that he knew eons before him that they would eat when they were told not to and already knew this. And because humans uh, did what he knew they would do, he had created them to do what he already knew would happen. He brought all of humanity sinful from the moment of birth, perhaps the moment of conception. So they can't be innocent because he created them to be sinful and therefore it's perfectly fine to be ordered, ordered, eliminated because God created them for the sole purpose to sin and be offed and then cast into eternal suffering for the sins that he created to commit. Hmm. So, 
there is a pretty easy analogy that addresses this. If you have children, everybody who has children know that your child's probably going to grow up and do really bad things. Now, you can't know 100% for a fact, but the vast majority of kids at some point grow up and do, at some point, do some pretty heinous things. You may get to know about them. You may not get to know about them, but you have the child regardless. Uh, you have the child uh, and whatever have you. Um, being a loving parent and having a loving society and situation means allowing people to be born uh, and, and letting them live their life, even if you know they're going to make bad, bad choices. One person would argue, one Christian theologist argues, one very popular one, I believe C.S. Lewis, argues that God is perfectly loving. In order for that love to be displayed, he has to, he, he let people have these choices and make these choices so they can live out those, those choices. And if he made everyone just do, sir, yes, sir, whatever you want, sir, you don't have love, you have automatons. Right. And robots can't love pre-programmed things can't love plants, which just do what they're programmed to do. They just grow and reproduce, cannot love. Um, you can't have light without the darkness. OK, you can't have light without the darkness. Uh, you're saying this is bad because if you create people who sin, it's going to create the suffering and suffering is bad. But that's your subjective truth that you think any and all suffering is bad. There is suffering that serves a purpose. When I go to the dentist, I have the tooth pulled. That hurts like the dickens, but it serves a purpose. It is good suffering. When I take a bullet for an innocent person, I suffer. But the act that I did was a good act. Of course, it's created by an evil thing. So let's take uh, something a little bit easier to comprehend. If, a, if a, there's an accident happening and a tree is falling down on somebody and I rush and I push them out of the way, the tree was nobody's fault, but it just you know got old and fell over. I push that person out of the way. I get crushed. I suffered you know, from being crushed. But again, it was for a good reason. It showed heroism and it saved another person's life. There are reasons where suffering can be necessary and can actually be beneficial and good. I do believe, I admit I should say, that sci-fi shows do plant the seeds of anti-Abrahamic religious sentiment, but I think we're giving them far too much cred, credit for the rapid decline of Christianity in developed nations. Um, I might have misspoke. I don't remember the exact words I said. I, I never meant to attribute all blame or credit or whatever you want to call it to them. They're one piece of the puzzle. I do believe that television as a whole, which included other shows, comedies and the such, I could point to a number of them that more and more pushed public sentiment. We went as a nation in America, we went from the majority, including the Democrats being against, let's say, gay marriage to being very accepting of it a decade later. That's the power of television uh, and whatnot. So yeah, television had a lot to do with it, a lot. The news would be another section. Uh, I think science fiction just played a, a role in it. And it was one of the uh, earliest genres to really jump on humanism with the original Star Trek. Uh, Star Trek pushed humanism earlier than any other show that I can remember and, and whatnot. To be fair, Christianity did and is still doing that to itself by refusing to keep peace with secular, ethical, and scientific progress. Keep pace. Oh, keep pace with, with secular, ethical, and scientific progress. Um, secular, ethical. Ugh. Uh, no, I don't want to keep pace with secular ethics. They change their ethics every other day. They're terrible. No, I don't want to keep up with, with secular ethics. That's terrible. Uh, I swear, uh, you know, I've been around for a few years now, and I've seen so many things change in the last few years. Uh, no, no, I, I, I no want. Sci-fi via soft influence probably, I think, only played a much lesser role. I, I mean, I can definitely have different opinions there as far as how much a role sci-fi played. Uh, I just tend to focus on it because it's the genre I know very well and I'm passionate and, and, and love the shows. I love the shows. And you criticize that which you love. Um, oh, wow. Like, I don't really like sports. So you're not going to see me do a lot of deep dive videos into football. Oh, wow. So does the demonstration of starvation, pain, suffering say, what does this demonstration of starvation, pain, suffering say about your God? I'm betting you will go down the path of sinning. But if your God is all that and a bag of chips, it could have been created by people that didn't sin. Um, I kind of explain at least one of the arguments. Uh, I have other arguments, but 
uh, kind of goes beyond the scope of the video. We could be here all day. You can look up any videos of why is there pain and suffering. There's been entire books written on the subject by, by Christians, including C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis has a really good book about it. I think you should go check it out. Ravi Zacharias has a book about it. You can go and check those out. The bottom line is you're saying this was all created by God, so that includes the good and the bad. If an all-loving, again, what, what is good and bad? You're deciding what's good and bad, right? And I mean good with a capital G and bad with a capital B. Look, I don't like pain. I have back pain, right? I don't ascribe an ethical uh, you know, type of thing to that back pain or whatever have you. But it is part of the human condition. It's part of life, whether I like it or not. It is part of the universe that God has given us. So yes, I accept it. And I don't begrudge God because I have um, some back pain or whatever have you. If an all-loving God created one person to suffer, then it's not living at all. See, you guys are putting your own suffering as the highest ethical and the suffering of others as the highest ethical um standard and everything else is but again that's that's you making up a judgment there's plenty of people who think suffering is good whether it's the suffering of themselves or others for various reasons they think it's good they think it helps them out ethically to suffer they inflict self-harm right there's there's plenty of, of, of faiths out there and, and people who believe in self-harm as a way to better themselves they don't see that as a bad thing they see it as a good thing and then there's some psychopaths that inflict all kinds of suffering on other people and then there's dentists who inflict suffering on other people. I like dentists. But they inflict suffering for their greater good. Suffering, I don't think, is a universal yardstick that you can use to measure ethics. And it gets used as a hammer over and over again in these discussions. The sooner we can get Christianity added to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, the sooner we can get the help that people so desperately need. This is one reason Star Trek Universe is so popular is that Christianity almost plays no part. It's a world we all yearn for. Got a lot of likes on that one. Um, that's, that is, uh, not a very nice thing to say, but, uh, it's at least, uh, honest. If you truly believe that there is no God, then you do believe that Christians are suffering from some sort of delusion at the very least, or they've been misled. Though I think going all the way to mental disorder for anybody who's been misled is uncharitable at best. Um. And, and I don't think you're going to win a lot of Christians over to your argument by insulting them, but that's just me. Maybe, maybe you think that's a great strategy. The Bible is subjective in terms of ethics, morality of its described deity. In terms of truth, it is a run-the-mill document of its time. Uh, well, how are you evaluating its, uh, its truth and its ethics and whatever have you? I will say, I studied a lot of religions when I was a young guy, trying to pick, uh, you know, pick one that I, I knew I wanted to do, and I, um, I, I would say one thing that makes Christianity stand out is most of these other religions promise you all kinds of gifts and prizes in, in the afterlife. Uh, Islam promises you a bunch of virgin wives. Mormonism, you can eventually become a deity of your own planet. Things like that. Um, I would. Um, I would suggest that Christianity is kind of different because what it promises you in eternity to worship God in heaven, that's it. <laughs> and so um, I, 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 if I was going to make up a religion that someone's going to pull out their behind, I would make sure it had lots of good prizes, especially for men, because men were pretty dominant in those times. Uh, make sure they had free wives and all kinds of other stuff and become their own God. That's going to appeal and get people really motivated to follow you. Telling people that they're probably going to die for their beliefs at some point uh, and that they could die for their beliefs, uh, which is what the New Testament does over and over again. Uh, everyone who followed Christ ended up dying for him, uh, just about in the New Testament. Uh, this is the fate of a lot of Christians, especially in the early days. And that when they die, the reward is they get to worship God in heaven is not an incentive structure that gets the masses to flock to you in and of itself. And yet Christianity spread like wildfire in comparison with other religions that you're speaking about of the time that they could have chosen instead. And that's because Christianity speaks to the truth of the human condition of needing forgiveness for sins. That's, that's why, uh, you know, when people understood that and they realized that God, Jesus Christ, the other part was that Jesus Christ did truly get resurrected. Christianity lives and dies, by the way, on that truth that Jesus was resurrected. That's why it grew like wildfire and it spread. So there you go. Uh, nobody gets their morals from the Bible. Nobody ever has. I, I would agree that 
I would agree. I would disagree that no one gets their their morals from the a Bible. In fact, everyone preaches it all the time. But but this line that nobody ever has, or I don't know. I think if you want to clarify this, I'll clarify what I think that this this could mean a bit more accurately. Is that no one follows the Bible perfectly. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. And no one truly follows God's word, and follows the intent of law along with the letter of the law. Um, no one does that anywhere close to perfectly right christians are deeply flawed individuals just like um, everybody else and while those who follow god hopefully have a life that is closer in keeping with god's word the bible doesn't pull any punches peter betrayed christ king david betrayed god uh he had somebody killed uh you know the bible points out to us over and over again that the people who follow him at some point do fail what makes christians different than let's say uh, others is that when they get up they throw themselves at god's feet ask for forgiveness and push on in greater faith through him um, to walk closer with him so they have strong faith in god and they don't allow that sin to break their faith in god uh, so there's one song that says the saints are the sinners who fall down and get up so and getting up doesn't just mean being a good person afterwards no no it means following getting back up and following god um, it's all fiction you do realize like all religions uh, I think I've already kind of addressed. If you're talking about the show, of course I realize it's it's fiction, of course. Constructed from cultural references and icons and imagery, people might associate it with it. It is not real, like all religion. Wait, is religions fake or I'm super confused? But fortunately, FFS stop being so gullible. I never said it was. Or whatever, you guys on the internet, you you, you guys are silly. Uh, well, until I watched this, I didn't think there was any parallels between Origin and Christianity, but you've managed to convince me that indeed Christianity is as bad as Origin and so should be opposed. Well, there there you go. At least I, I convinced you of of something. You are worried about Stargate? Perhaps you should get out more? I'm not worried about... Well, I, you know, I, I've already expressed what I thought shows like Stargate have done to our culture and whatever have you. It's okay to be worried about such things. Get out more? I do get out. I... But do I need to get out more? I suppose. I take a walk every day for what it's worth. Go outside and take a walk every day. I need to lose more weight. So, uh, sure. Dude, you take a five to six minute clip and make a 35 minute video. Well, geez, I'm almost at an hour just responding to the responses. Hey, you guys, you guys took a 35 minute video and turned it into a whole bunch of comments. So look at all those pages of comments. I've done videos about all kinds of subjects in the past, including Christianity. Uh, video games and a whole bunch else. I don't know if I ever had this many comments before. So I don't know. What does that say about you guys? I mean, if I'm really off my rocker and kind of crazy, aren't you guys kind of wasting your time throwing out your comments at me? I don't know. You, you tell me. I like having these conversations. And again, uh, I want to I wanna say a big shout out to one person here, and I'll see if I can find his posting. Um, Fed guy here wrote all of this. Now, I did a separate video responding to these comments here. You can go and check that out. And then we had a nice four-hour conversation. I would say out of out of everybody, Fed Guy had the intellectual honesty to detail out his thoughts and not just do ad hominem drive-by attacks or whatever, like some of these people did. I'm not saying all of you did it, but he, he really went into some really detail, gave it a lot of thought, took a lot of good notes, and then had a very well thought out and charitable conversation with me. And we didn't agree on a whole lot, but there was a couple things I think we could both agree on. But I want to say thank you, Fed Guy, and I wanted to take a moment during this video to thank you for uh, the conversation. I hope we have more of them in the future. But uh, uh, yeah, but these are, uh, yeah. So this is probably the only video, I want to say probably, I don't know. Maybe I'll get another hair up my nostril and do something else. But this will probably be the only response video I do because I, I don't want to keep responding to comments, some of which are just kind of trolly comments anyways. Uh, but if any of you want to have a serious conversation like Fed Guy did, you're welcome to friend me on Discord. I am JC Servant. He found me very easily on there. J-C-S-E-R, V for Victor, A in for Nancy T for Tom, just like it says here um, in YouTube. My nickname is JC Servant with a bunch of numbers on it or whatever, JC Servant W. Um, you can pull me up on Discord that way, and you're welcome to have a, a an honest conversation with me if you want to have an honest conversation. If you just want to be angry and yell and do ad hominem attacks, um, let's not waste each other's time. 
but uh but thank thank for those of you who did take some time to leave some thoughtful comments Gemma did here i think so uh and a few others thank you so much uh, for those of you who just stopped by and left uh some quick attacks and silly one-liners and whatever have you thank you i guess you give me something else to talk about uh, but uh I hope everyone has a, a pretty good day today, and may God bless you.